peer observation as professional development. Calgary French and International School's strategic plan includes the following three objectives. That teachers implement multiple methods of program delivery and student learning that incorporates technology used in a transformative way. To support strong relationships among members of the CFIS community and to recruit, select, develop, and retain the highest caliber teachers. A recent survey that was administered at Calgary French International School yielded the following results. Teachers know uh, technology and are competent in using it. However, they do require more professional development to understand how to appropriately incorporate technology in their classes. And one of the strategies that they identified as being useful for them to achieve this goal would be through peer coaching and mentoring. So a possible solution was the idea of looking at teacher observation to solve this problem. So the statement of the issue is, can teacher peer observation and feedback positively impact educators' teaching practice and improve student achievement? It is believed, based on the research, that yes, teacher peer observation and feedback can positively impact educators' teaching practice and improve student achievement. So what is peer observation? Let's try to define it by looking at this video. Peer observation at Ipswich Girls Grammar School is the process whereby a teacher arranges to come in and spend some time in the classroom of another teacher looking at the strategies that are used within the class. We have a specific focus in that we're looking at lesson structure and particularly the articulation of lesson objectives. When we started our quality teaching project, the first thing we did was quite an extensive literature review and it was very clear from the literature that peer observation was one of the best strategies for professional development that we could provide for our so what does the literature have to say about peer observation? Peer observation has been demonstrated by Spark to be the most effective way to engage in professional development. He conducted a study where a group of junior high teachers received three different types of professional development. All three attended the same PD workshop. One group received no further training. One group was coached by a workshop trainer and one group participated in peer observation. At the end of the study, they determined that the group that received the peer observation changed their practice and improved their teaching more than the other two groups. Bell and Mladenovic conducted a peer observation study in higher education with faculty tutors. 32 tutors participated in the study. At the end of the study, 88% said that they would change their practice and 94% agreed that peer observation was valuable. And so it can be said that teachers value peer observation and because of it, change their practice. Since it is part of CFIS's strategic goal to ensure that teachers change their practice and innovate, then this would be a really good means to achieving this goal. Other benefits observed in research are that peer observation increases teachers' self-reflection, awareness, and confidence. This occurs if Peer observation is followed by a discussion, a time to think, and um, a written uh, plan of action after the observation has taken place. It can be said that teacher observation is a collaborative process, 
And based on research conducted by Morel, um, he believes that the observation process is collaborative, it, pro it promotes productivity, it also leads to greater job satisfaction and um, allows for more effective practice to develop for teachers. And this is especially true for adult learners. And so this is a really good strategy to apply um, for Calgary French and International School for two reasons in that uh, it's great for professional development, but it also meets the strategic goal of retaining uh, high quality teachers and teachers who are satisfied are going to stay at the school. It should not be overlooked that peer observation benefits both the observer and the observee. In the context of Calgary French and International School, and where we're really looking at integrating technology in the classroom, this will really be beneficial where we can have teachers observing good teaching practice with technology and through the observation and the conversations that the peers are going to have afterwards, they will be able to uh, change their practice. I wanted to see what teachers were saying about peer observation and particularly from both perspectives, so as the person being observed or as the person doing the observing. And I think it's pretty evident from the feedback that uh, these teachers have given that they really see the benefits. For example, Susanna Cord felt that in ob observing someone, she was able to gain new perspectives and new tricks that she could try out in her own classroom. Sarah Fish, in being observed and through the discussions afterwards, it allowed her to have um, reflection into her own pedagogy, and as a result, she believes she's become a better teacher. And David Caldler, who uh, also, through observing someone, uh, was able to get some new ideas to innovate his own classroom, and as he says, it can get pretty boring after a while. Other benefits that were identified for peer observation include um, when students observe teachers observing teachers um, they realize that they are in a continuous um, self-improvement process and they're seeing them being collaborative and that serves as good role models for students it also ensures that the relationship between colleagues at the school becomes really strong so there's increased collegiality and also it has been demonstrated to be cost effective so some recommendations, a lot of the literature um, really emphasizes the importance of doing peer observation well, because if there is no thought process, there's no planning, if there's no important discussions that occur beforehand, um, there can be, it can really backfire. So one of the most important recommendations, and this came out in a lot of the literature, is the process should be voluntary. This is not something that you impose on teachers. However, um, if it is a practice that, uh, and part of the culture of the school, um, teachers will eventually start doing it when they see others have started. And so they recommend that you, you ask for volunteers and you, you start with the few keeners who want to do it and they believe that others will soon follow suit. Also, it's really important that teachers be trained um, to, to observe as well as to provide good and constructive feedback. Other recommendations that have been made are that peers should meet ahead of the observation and discuss what the observation objectives are and make that very clear ahead of time. They should also elaborate their own observation tools and um, plan when, when it's going to happen. This really helps um, alleviate some of the anxiety around the peer observation. Shusha also has made some recommendations that post-observation feedback should be given uh, both orally and in written form. In a few different studies, they recommend that the conversation should begin by the person who gave the lesson giving their own personal perspective first as to how the lesson went before the observer gives the feedback. And probably one of the most important aspects of this um, in developing is developing trust between colleagues is that this needs to remain confidential. The 
people who are involved in this need to understand that this is not about being evaluated. This information is not going to land on the principal's desk. This is between the two people involved in the observe observation only. One model that I found um, that I really liked was proposed by um, Erie in his research. And um, this is what it looks like. And basically, there are five different steps to it. So the pre-observation meeting that I mentioned, the actual observation, then the post-observation discussion, and one, one step that is absolutely critical in this is to have um, time for the person who was observed to reflect on the feedback that they received, reflect on their lesson. And then on the fifth stage is to actually come up with an action plan. I think um, there are benefits for doing stage one, doing stage two, and doing stage three. But I think the value really comes out when stage four and stage five occur. Otherwise, um, you're missing out on where change actually takes place. Um, without an action plan, without that critical reflection, I suspect there would be little opportunity for a teacher to actually make change in their practice. So my final recommendation is that Calgary French and International Schools should adopt the following policy where they are committed to providing teachers with ongoing high quality professional development to ensure that teachers develop excellent teaching practices that benefit students learning. Research has demonstrated that peer observation as professional development can positively impact teachers' pedagogical practice, confidence, self-awareness, and increase teacher collegiality. This policy aims to contribute to the enhancement of the faculty's teaching practice through peer observations. CFIS will invest resources to ensure that faculty can observe and learn from one another in a safe and confidential environment.